Hi, I'm Pete and welcome to Just a Few Acres Farm. These are the days when we get the work done. Seven days straight of sun and gradually rising temperatures, whereas when it gets to Friday, it's gonna be all the way up to about 162 degrees Celsius. These are the days when you get up before dawn, you go out and you feed the animals, you have a big breakfast, grab a cup of coffee, and head out to work all day long. Notice there's two old bales of hay here. First one comes into play now, the second one later in the video. Hey, what happened to Doody Doody Doo? Well, don't, you guys, you're always getting in the way. You guys are some bossy pigs. Amazingly, the pigs have eaten pretty much their whole hay bond. There's nothing left here but a few little pieces and dirt. So they've taken up residence from here back over next to the feeder. <laughs> Stop messing with the camera, you. And I've noticed they're eating more grain since the hay ran out. You guys, you eating me out of house and home. You are. For us, hay is a good bedding material for pigs because they'll get a little bit of nutrition out of it. This is a two-year-old bale, so it's not something I really want to feed to the cows unless we were in dire circumstances. Hay is cheaper than straw here, and this bale cost me, I think, $30 two years ago, so you can't beat that. It's going to pay for itself, at least in the decrease in feed consumption that we'll see. And these pigs have been voracious. We've never had to feed a second hay bomb before, but these guys aren't going to the butcher for a month and a half. Hey, did you hear? The police arrested two kids yesterday. One was drinking battery acid, and the other one was eating fireworks. It's true. They charged one, and they let the other one off. Before I get any further with this day, I wanna show you something. It's right over in here. Hey, little guys. Our first batch of broiler chicks came in the mail four days ago. They're all doing great. Spring is sprung when broilers show up. They're just chilling right now. So from this point forward through the summer, we have chicks coming every two weeks and we run them right through selling fresh chicken at the farmer's market starting at the end of, the May, end of May. And because we stagger the batches, we run right through October with fresh chicken. And of the 50 loads, I probably put 40 on this field. It's about five acres. I covered it real heavy.
here's the method to my madness of manure spreading. Every preceding growing season, I look at the fields throughout the season to see which are doing well, which have a lot of yield, which are not doing so well. And then the next spring, I'll take one of our fields, and our fields run about five acres on average, and I'll coat that one really heavy, like the field I showed you. And then I'll take a couple more fields and coat them light, like you saw on the chicken field when I started manure spreading. And that way I cover about half of our 30 acres of pasture ground every year. Well, it's combined hay and pasture ground. One field real heavy, which historically I've seen in the probably the three years after I do that, real good forage growth, and then another couple fields lighter. say that's a load. Bucket versus forks for loading compost. When I'm loading old stuff like was in here in this pile, it's crumbly and a lot of it falls through the forks so I use the bucket. The bucket is much cleaner. Now I'm into this pile here that I took out of the barn last winter and that's still largely intact so the forks are easier than the bucket and I don't drop much. In addition in that composted manure I had pig and chicken litter, which is wood chips and manure, falls right through the pine bucket. Okay. Well, you gotta do this. They've been working on it. Holy cows, there's even grass sprouting in the winter pasture. I just see green in there. This is a pattern my grandfather taught me way back when, when we would disc and drag fields. You start at the edge and then you come around and you come back because this is a short field, it's more than a load will go three or four passes. So you come around at a comfortable turning radius and then you come back in. And then when you get to the other end where I am now, you come back in and you come down right beside your original pass and you keep looping it around like this in kind of a spiral, I guess? You just keep going. With this corkscrew or spiral pattern that I'm using to spread the manure, you can either cut the field in half if the field is small enough, and then you've just kind of got one round of a big corkscrew, or you can divide it into segments like I've done with this one where a segment is a comfortable turn radius, and once you finish that particular corkscrew pattern, then you start a new one. This is it, probably two or three more loads. The 
reason I'm spreading everything this year, not leaving a pile to compost, is because the water line and the electric line for the barn addition goes right up through here. We don't want to dig it under the driveway, so I'm clearing all this out. Dig this up and run the water lines. See the electric line in? Well, I had to come back to the shop because the spreader jammed. On the load before this, this paddle came loose and broke off and caught one of the angles on the apron chain. So I replaced the paddle and cut out the apron chain crossbar that was bent up. And I thought I was good to go. But apparently I wasn't because you see the apron chain links coming down through here. Here's the sprocket they go on. Well, it's all twisted up. I don't know if you can see that down there, but the two chains have come out of sync so that the cross members, the cross angles here, are slanted. If you think you've spread manure, but you've never had to pitch out a full wagon with a apron chain broken, well, I guess you haven't done enough manure. Because <laughs> that's what I'm gonna have to do. I'm gonna have to pitch. Maybe I can take some of it out with the forks, but I'm gonna be in there pitching manure out and then I can fix it that is very discouraging especially since this little pile here is all I got left of what used to be the Pooh Ridge Mountains it's all gone just that I want to finish it today so I guess I'll get out the backup tractor and spreader and finish it with that Oops. Good enough for now. We're gonna need this. What are you guys yelling about? No, you can't go out on pasture yet. You just can't. Last load, what I forked on to clean up. Oh, come on, you. Why is everything fighting me today? There. I'm gonna take this, put it up like this. this with one hand always with the last load of the year I clean this out stuff accumulates here because these are mud flaps which cover the space where the apron chain comes up and comes around and we'll get a little bit that sits in here no big deal but I always make sure to clean it out at the end of the year and then we'll speed up this apron chain and spread the rest Yep, 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 yep. And that is it for spring manure spreading. Just clean this off a little bit. And before I put this away for the year in the barn, I pressure wash it out clean, get all the manure 
out of it. Remember at the beginning of this video, I said I had to use for two bales of hay? Well, now we're gonna get the second one. Yep, bale number two. I've got to turn on old Blinky Blink here. Watch out, JJ. Watch out. Got to bring a shovel in with JJ. He's scared of the shovel. Watch out, buddy. Go over there. Over there. Go on out, bossy pig. You've been sniffing at the door for a while. And JJ's been sniffing at you. JJ, quit chewing on the doorway and come on out to see me. You can do it. You just barely fit. Check it out. It's kind of muddy, I know. Hey, bud. Bossy pig, you come out too. JJ's already exploring the space. Sometimes it's hard to get a sense of how big JJ is, just how massive he is. I think it's easier to see how big he is when you can see him all outside here. He is just a huge guy. You go check out that hay. Oh, you're eating. He's so big. Here's the outdoor activity schedule for our pigs this year. JJ and Bossy Pig are gonna have the run of this place outside for the whole summer. Well, Bossy Pig not the whole summer. After Brownie has her piglets and weans her piglets off, we'll put her back in with JJ here and she'll get to come outside. And then Bossy Pig's going into the farrowing pen where Brownie is now to have her piglets. As for Billy, he's gonna be stuck inside for a little bit. We've gotta reconfigure this area and we're gonna put another pig pasture off to the end of Billy's pen and then he'll be able to go out too. But ultimately, once we get the barn reconfigured for the pigs, they'll all be together except for the farrowing ones and they'll be able to come out and go in as they please. She's just not sure about this coming outside thing, even though she spent all last uh, summer outside. She'll just have to take her time. She'll be out eventually. Next steps. This time of year is all about checking tasks off the list, and the list is getting bigger and bigger. Tomorrow I'm going to come in here with a box blade, and first I'll scrape all the surfaces of the driveways, get the manure and mud off of the surface of the driveways, and then I'll come through with the teeth down a little bit and scarify that top layer of stone to clean everything up. I gotta move that pile of topsoil there. I might lose that in here just to get rid of it. And my contractor will probably, I'm guessing he'll be in later this week because it's drying out awful fast. I gotta move the fence in the winter pasture so he can start putting fill in there. What else? We gotta watch for brownies piglets. I gotta fork out a load of manure. Yep, lots of work to do this time of year. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you're having weather like us, and I'll see you next time. She came out. She was just being shy. Oh, don't drink that water, yucky. JJ's busy eating cow manure that I threw in here. Isn't that good, JJ?